Hey there guys and gals, this is everything that I got in the Command of Nature Kickstarter from Unstable Games. I've done Casting Shadows and I did Here to Slay before that, and those have become some of my group's favorite tabletop games to play. So I knew Command of Nature was a shoe in like had to grab it. Command of Nature is technically a prequel within the storyline of Casting Shadows. But it plays very differently, whereas Casting Shadows is a board game. This is definitely a card game, but it is one of the most interesting card games I've ever seen. This is everything that comes in it, including the holographic exclusive edition box and the Sand and Wind expansions, which give you two new playable decks to use. But since Sand and Wind is an expansion, I'm actually going to unbox that in another video later. So what do you actually get? In the Command of Nature Ultimate Collector Set Expanded, you get the Kickstarter exclusive game. You get the expansion. You get a pin that says you planted a tree. You get the vinyl figure box set. The figures don't actually factor into the game. It's not like Casting Shadows where you can use those figures or Here to Slay where you can put that figure in front of you. I mean, I guess you could still put the figure in front of you, but it has no gameplay benefit to you using it. Then you've got the Playmat Bundle Box. You've got the acrylic standees, which I think are also in that box. And then you've got all the wooden tokens, which are here. You've got card sleeves to cover all the cards. We'll hope that works. And then all the applicable stretch goals. So there's more characters, more ritual commands, more utility commands, more attack commands, more instant commands. Kickstarter exclusive metal gold coins. I'm hoping they're in there. I'm not actually sure, but I'm hoping they're in there. And the foil box detail. So that's everything in here. We're going to unbox it, but remember, I'm going to do the Sand and Wind expansion in a different video because, generally speaking, the people who are looking at the expansions already have the base game. They don't need to see that. But if they want to see what's in the expansion, they can go to the other video. And I almost forgot the thing that wasn't listed on that list. The sticker packs. I got them because the sticker designs are adorable. All the creature designs are so cute. So I'm pretty sure I have sticker sets for all the factions, all six. I think we should just go in the order that they appear on the Ultimate Collector Set Expanded card. So we're gonna go with the Kickstarter exclusive edition of the box. You have this super cool hollow foil box. You got your elements. It's got what's in here. It looks like some coins, but I'm not 100% sure if my coins are in here. We will find out very soon. Now we have our box with the cellophane removed. You can really see how cool this hollow foil box is. Look at it, it's so cool. We've got our rule book. Great art. Your four base elements, pebble, droplet, twig, leaf. And those are their, their respective sages. Do this. I will say, I'll probably, I will hopefully be filming at least one game of Command of Nature, but you essentially play within you like build a pyramid and your pyramid is your formation. So when you play games like 2v2, it's like you're an actual team. Your two formations sort of form together and you can swap cards between the two, which is awesome. So you have all the punch board clips. You have all the punch board clips here. You have one for each of your actions. And these you use to show what level you are, how many people, how many elementals you've defeated of another faction. These are basically your hit point counters. Then you have your shields, which defend you from one damage, and your upgrades, which add one damage to your attacks. These are the player boards. So we have Pebble Sage. Here we have Cedar, the Twig Sage. These feel really, really nice. I'm not going to lie to you. Perella, the Leaf Sage. My girl, hey. And finally... Torrent, the Droplet Sage. I wasn't expecting them to be books. That's really neat, actually. Oh, here are my exclusive metal coins. Okay, one thing I'm going to try to do, especially in this video in particular, is I will continue to talk to you from here, but I'm going to show you the items on my little spinning face while it's going so you guys can see what I'm actually looking at. So... I'm going to try to open these metal coins, if I could. So we have these really cool metal coins. They are double-sided. There's a three, 
on one side. Pretty much everything in Command of Nature uh, is double-sided so that you can do ones and threes if they go up high numbers. So you've got, on the three side, it says, Glory awaits the master of the elements. Oh, it says it on the one side as well. But yeah, those are all your gold coins. So these are our Kickstarter exclusive gold coins. <laughs> Now, I won't lie to any of you, you can definitely reuse these gold coins for, like, D&D &D and other stuff, should you wish to do that. Ain't nobody gonna stop you. Next up, we've got your Pebble Sage Pack, your Twig Sage Pack, your Droplet Sage Pack, your Leaf Sage Pack. Then you have the Elemental Market Deck. And then, on this side, is the Command Market Deck. We're gonna go through all of the decks, so don't you worry about it. And we're gonna start the sage decks okay so pebble deck. elemental sage pebble uh all of the sages have the same ability regardless of what row of their of your formation they are in you will collect three gold and that is how you purchase things from the marketplace without that you really can't do anything so you need the money and that's essentially how these cards work you have your damage from this warrior or this elemental you have how much health this elemental has and then almost all of them have some kind of effect based on what row of your formation they're in so geo weasel you want him in the first row of your formation so that's the one up at the top closest to your opponents because when he's in the first row of your formation when an elemental in your formation is attacked you collect one gold if that elemental is a pebble collect an additional gold Onyx Bearer, add one shield to an elemental in your row one, except he needs to be in row two, so he's actually throwing the shield from the back. Granite Rampart, this one works in two different rows of your formation, one and two. Draw a card if this elemental has at least one shield on it. You have a whole bunch of your basic dudes. These are your, these are pretty much gonna form like the backbone of your organization of your faction. Then you have your specialty guys so on your player boards there are levels that you get your level goes up every time you defeat an enemy elemental and when you get to certain levels you unlock a new guy so this guy's level four when you've defeated four other elementals bam jade titan can come in if he's in your front row you can add one shield to your sage if he deals damage and he deals a lot he deals three damage at one go not as much as boulder hide brute in row one or two, when you add any number of shields to this elemental, add a boost to it. So he gets both defense and offense every time you buff him. Again, this is your last guy, the Oxen Avenger. When an elemental in your formation has any number of shields removed from it, deal one damage to an elemental in your opponent's formation. So this guy's in row one or two. If any of your teammates have a shield, this guy can be like, no, stop hurting my friends. And then these are the attack commands so you have far strike if you're in row one or two you can hit someone two rows away from you close strike is when you're in row one you hit someone in their row one same thing same thing then you have your pebble charms uh you add another shield to one of your elementals when your elementals are attacked natural restoration i think everyone has uh you reduce damage by one and then pebble protection add two shields to an elemental in your row one or two if you have at least two basic elementals in your formation so if you have any cobbles in your team, you can give somebody two shields. And Pebbles gameplay style is essentially like, I'm gonna make sure that my team is buffed all the time. But generally speaking, the shield buff, not the attack buff. Next up, we've got the Twig Sage. I won't give you all the details because now you know exactly how they work. Uh, you lose the game if your Sage gets defeated, so your Sage has pretty much the most health out of everybody on your team. Again, you, your Sage gives you three gold. Ah, this guy gets stronger if someone gets hit. This guy boosts someone in the front row from the back. So it seems like Twig and Pebble are opposites. Pebble is shields, Twig is offense, boosts. Like gold equal to its strength. Ooh, your basic elemental for twig is timber. Timber! And then you have your Vix Vanguard. Ooh, you can draw a card. That might be helpful. The Horned Hollow. 
Oh, remove all damage counters. This guy just keeps healing himself. That's sweet. And then your final guy, Calamity Leopard. When this elemental attacks, do not remove boosts from it. So you can just keep making him stronger and stronger. You have far strike, close strike, close strike. A twig charm. Play this when a twig elemental in your formation is attacked. So this is pretty much the same as pebble, except it gives you a boost, which boosts the damage instead of a shield. Natural restoration, everybody does have. And then twig tradition. What do you have? Add two boosts to elemental in your row if you have at least two basic elementals. So if you've got any timbers, then you can give somebody a boost. Give two boosts to somebody in row one. Ooh, that's strong. That's very strong. Next up, we've got Droplet. So their sage is Torrent. Same ability as all the other guys. Collect three gold. Draw a card. So the positions of an elemental in row two and three. Oh, so you can move. Cool, 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 cool. That kind of reminds me of Vortex Runner. This could be Bloomborough's version of Vortex Runner. That's that's fun. Coastal Coyote. Ooh. When an elemental, whenever a droplet elemental enters your row two, collect two gold. Okay. And your basic elemental is just little dribble. Look at him. He's so cute. You got Tide Turner. When he attacks, you're drawing cards. So it seems like Droplet wants to draw cards. When a connected elemental will be dealt damage, you may swap its position with the... Oh, so you can use this guy. This is their Charix. Just use him as a shield. And then the Frostfall Emperor. Whenever he enters your row one, deal two damage to an, opponent, to an elemental in your opponent's row three. Oh, so if you can get this guy in the front and you keep moving him back and forth, back up to the front, back up to the front, back up to the front, you can keep slamming your opponent's sage. That's cool. Because generally speaking, you want to keep your sage somewhere in the back. So he's defended. Your far strike, your close strike. Droplet charm, what do you do? Does it make you draw a card? Yeah, it does. Play this card when a drop of the elemental in your formation is attacked. Draw a card. If that elemental is defeated by damage from this attack, draw. Oh, you can draw two cards. Cool. Natural restoration. Everybody's got it. Then droplet divination. Draw three cards if you have at least two basic elementals. So if you've got this guy, you can draw cards. And finally, the fourth character, the fourth faction in the base game, you have Leaf. Perella is very here to slay, except it's the wrong class. Druids would be deer. Thorn Fencer! Add a boost or a shield to this elemental if he's in your first row. Oh. Petal Mage! That's cute. That could have been in Bloomborough as well. That really could have been in Bloomborough. When this elemental enters your row two, move a card from your discard pile to your hand! So these guys are the weirdos. An elemental enters your formation, collect one gold. That elemental is a leaf elemental, collect one additional gold. They have like a little bit of everything. Oh, look at Sprout, the little mushroom child. Agile assailant. If he gets into your row two, what elemental enters your formation, add one boost to this elemental. When an elemental leaves your formation, add one shield to this elemental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the, uh, leaf is the flex class. It can do a little bit of everything. Oh. This guy can be sacrificed. Ooh, interesting. When this elemental defeats an elemental in your opponent's formation, move an elemental from your discard pile to your formation. Oh, man. If you have Kimono Kin and Bog Blight on a squad, you are wrecking. You get your Far Strike and your Close Strikes. Your Leaf Charm. Play it when the Leaf Elemental is attacked. Deal one damage to the attacking elemental. Oh, so it's like a Reflectant. A reflectin? It's like a reflection. Natural restoration, that makes sense. Leaf Lullaby. Move up to two cards from your discard pile to your hand if you have at least two basic elementals. So if you've got sprouts in your formation, you can bring guys back to life. That's cool. The market that you purchase your characters from, or items from, in addition, which you need these gold coins for, uh, has two rows in it. One has basically elemental mercenaries that you can hire. And the other one has abilities and attacks and other stuff that you can use against your opponents or to help you in combat as well, either or. We're gonna take a look at the command market deck first. Then we'll take a look at the elemental market deck. We're gonna take a look at the command market deck. So we're just gonna start with projectile blasts. So things in the command market, things in the market in general, they have this coin icon on the bottom. That's how many coins, how much gold it will take to 
buy that card and add it to your deck. Projectile Blast, if you're in row one or two of your formation, you can deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strike to an elemental two rows away in your opponent's formation. There's a bunch of those. You got a distant double strike. Costs three now. Choose two up to two elementals in your opponent's row two and deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength minus two to each of them. This is primitive strike. Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength to an elemental two rows away in your opponent's formation. If the attacking elemental is a basic elemental, add one to its strength during the attack. So primitive strike is great for murdering all the basic elementals, which is rude. Uh... Strike minus one, and it's right there. Focused Fury! Ah, Focused Fury actually removes shields, which is cool. Reinforced Impact! Ooh, this one's good. You deal damage, and then you get shields. There's a lot of those. Nature's Wrath. Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength to an elemental in your opponent's row one. If the attacking elemental is a basic elemental, add two. Oh, that's just mean. Obliterate the basic elementals. You're just being mean. Three rows away. This will help you murder their sage. Oh no, the grim blade. Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength to an elemental in your opponent's row one. If you use the attacking elemental to perform a ritual this turn, add two to its strength. I didn't go over ritual cards, but I believe the very last card in each of the sage decks is a ritual. Oh, so if you've got all your own dudes, you get way more power. There's only one of those because it's very powerful. Uh, Eclipse Scythe. Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength. To an elemental in your opponent's row one, then add one boost. So boosts are the things that buff your damage. Shields are the stuff that uh, stop you from taking one damage. Wow, this one costs seven gold? Dang. Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength to an elemental two rows away in your opponent's formation. If the damage is not reduced, deal one damage to each other elemental in your opponent's formation from the same background as the attack elemental. That's just mean. Guardian shot! Deal damage equal to the attacking elemental strength to an elemental two rows away in your bonus formation, then add one shield to the attacking elemental. Mystic Manuscript! Use your Sage to deal damage equal to your current level to an elemental in your opponent's row. So for five gold, if you can get your Sage to the front row, your Sage can do potentially eight damage in one swing, which will kill the vast majority of your opponent's elementals. Smoking boom. Use your sage to deal damage equal to your sage's strength to up to three elementals in your opponent's row one and two. So potentially you could hit all of them. Arcane bolt. Another one that costs seven. This is one that's again just for your sage. If you get your sage to roll one or two in your formation, you can use your sage to deal damage equal to your sage's strength plus three to an elemental two rows away. Use your sage to deal damage equal to your. <laughs> Exchange of Nature is a good way to, like, swap your Sage in and out. Elemental Swap. This one lets you move your opponent's people out of the way. Obliterate. Remove all boosts and shields from an elemental, then deal two damage to it. Incantation. Discard three cards. Choose up to six elementals in your opponent's formation and deal one damage to each of them. Oh, man. It's cost six gold. It's probably going to be pretty powerful. Deal damage equals the number of different factions represented in your formation. Oh, so potentially you could do six damage. Uh, that's presuming the elemental market has doesn't have people that aren't from the original four plus sand and wind. They might. You never know. Natural defense. Play this card when an elemental in your formation is attacked. Reduce that damage. So it's basically the same as a uh, shield. Melee shield. Play this card when an elemental in your formation is melee attacked. Reduce the damage dealt by two. Ranged barrier. I was going to say, reduce the damage by two from ranged attacks. So you saw that there were melee and ranged attacks. Faction fortitude. Play this card when an elemental in your formation is attacked. Reduce the damage dealt by the number of different factions represented in your formation. Uh, so instance, you can play in response to other people doing stuff. Null shard. 
Play this card when your opponent plays an instant command. Your count, your opponent must remove the instant command from the game after using its effect instead of moving into the discard pile. I thought it was going to be counter spell, but no, it still goes off. And then it gets exiled. Bye bye. Play this card when elemental in your formation attack. Discard a card from your hand, then reduce the damage all by three. Piercing Lash. Play this card when elemental enters your opponent from number one. Remove one boost or one shield from them, then add it to an L. Oh, you steal it. Ah, oh, it's cool. Give me that. Play this card when elemental in your formation attack. Reduce that damage to zero, then remove this card from the discard from the game. Oh, so it happens and then it gets exiled. Energy Elixir. Add one boost and one shield to that elemental. Okay. Divine Comet. Deal four damage to an elemental in your opponent's row three. This is a ritual. So yeah, that icon is the ritual. Divine Comet. So that's how you bomb their sage. Remove up to three damage counters. Hey! Astral Stars! Deal one damage to up to six elementals. Okay. Unknown Gateway. Choose a market deck. Reveal the top card from that deck, then add it to your hand. Oh, you just get to steal stuff? Cool. I'm gonna pay for it. Oh, you gotta pay the four to get that command, but then you get a free card. Collect six gold. Okay, I'm not gonna say no to that. Protection ritual. Add one shield to each elemental used to perform this ritual. Oh, so the rituals, basically you're, you're tapping your creatures in order to use a ritual. Power ritual. Add one boost. Empowering eye. Add three boosts to an elemental in your formation that was not used to... Oh, okay. So you make one guy stronger. The rest of your guys are convoking it. Yes, I relate everything to magic now. I have a problem. And finally, we come to the elemental market deck. We shall see how many factions are represented by this. Because honestly, I'm not sure if there are more than just the six. I have no idea. So here's the elemental market deck. Do 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 boop. Oh, you got some basic elementals. Cool, 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 cool. I didn't realize that you could get them. They're only worth one though. You got Willow, you got Bruce, you got Lumberclaw. When this elemental melee attacks, choose up to two elementals in your opponent's row two and deal one damage. I'll just smack them. Splinter Stinger! After this elemental deals damage by attacking, add one boost to it. Pine Snapper! When an elemental in your row one melee attacks, add one to its strength during the attack for each damage counter on this elemental. Twine Feline! Discard a card from your hand, then add two boosts to an elemental in your formation. Oak Lumbertron! Oh no! He's worth no he costs nine gold? This dude's strong! Discard up to three cards from your hand, then add one boost to an elemental in your row one for each card you discarded. Choose up to two elementals in your row two and add one boost to each of them. Camu, Chameleon. Woodbeak! Arr. When you use this elemental performer ritual, add three boosts to it. <sighs> Wicker Weasel. When a ritual command is played, add one boost to this elemental. Swinging Sentinel! When this elemental attacks, remove up to three boosts from connected elementals. Add one to this elemental strength during the attack for each boost removed. Birch Hair! Add two boosts to a connected elemental. If this elemental has at least one boost, add one additional boost. Okay, so you get big, strong dudes. Except we've got Wade. Dewey! Splash Basilisk! <laughs> when an elemental enters your row two, add one shield to that elemental. When this elemental enters your row one, deal two damage to an opponent's elemental in your opponent's row one. Typhoon Fist! And it's an axolotl, therefore I'm going to use him. 100%. Current Conjurer, when another elemental enters your row two, add one boost to that elemental. Surge Sphere Monk, when another elemental enters your row two, add one shield to that elemental. Whirl Whipper, swap the positions of an elemental in your row one and your an elemental in your row two, okay. Roaming Razor. That is a piranha that can control his own water. That is absolutely horrifying. After this elemental deals damage by attacking, swap its position with the connected elementals. <gasps> Ripple Retreater. When this elemental is defeated, move it to your discard pile instead of removing it from the game. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So this guy just comes on back. Aqua Acrobat. When you use this elemental to perform a ritual, you may swap its position with the connected elementals. Current Crusher. Oh, is that catfish? Are catfish the ones that hang on the bottom of the... I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Discard up to two cards in your hand, then draw a card for each card you discarded. Pearl Keeper. Okay, Bivara! Draw a card if this elemental has at least one shield, draw an additional card. Okay, cool, cool. 
Then you got some flint dudes. What up, you basics? Rocco, that makes sense. Stone defender, I want a shirt of him. Collect gold equal to the number of shields in this elemental. Okay, okay, okay. Cackle rip claw. It's a hyena. When an elemental in your formation is ranged attacked, reduce the damage dealt by two. Oh, hell yeah. Terrain tumbler. When an elemental in your row one would be dealt damage, this elemental may take that damage instead. Okay. Rune Puma. That would also make a really good shirt. Uh, when an elemental in your row one is melee attack, reduce the damage dealt to zero. Oh, so if you throw your sage out, people are like, I'm going to whack him. You put this guy in row two and he's like, nah, 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 nah. Redstone, that is an ant. Add one boost and one shield to an elemental in your formation. Discard up to two cards from your hand, then add two shields to an elemental in your formation for each card you discard it. Oh, by the way, this sign means that if there's a little sun, that means at the start of your turn, this happens. When you remove any number of shields from an elemental in your formation, draw a card. Stone scoundrel. When you use this elemental to perform a ritual, add one shield to each elemental used to perform that ritual. Cool. Terra Miner. Oh, he's a mole. When this elemental attacks, add three shields to a connected elemental. Oh, geez, that's strong. Gator Guard. Remove two damage counters from a connected elemental. If this elemental has at least one shield, remove one additional damage counter. And then finally, we get to the leaf guys. In the market, you got mush, and then you have Herbert. Herbert, forage thumper. Discard up to three cards from your hand, and then deal damage equal to the number of cards. Discard to an elemental in your opponent's row one, so you can discard all your cards and then wail on their basic elementals, assuming that's what they have. Oh, Sharp Beetle, you look cool. He could have been a Skylander. When an elemental leaves your formation, add one boost and one shield to this element. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Iguana Guard! When an elemental enters your formation, add one shield to an elemental in your row one. Humming Herald! When an elemental enters your formation, add one boost to an elemental in your row one. Bamboo Berserker. Berserker Barrage! Move up to three cards from your discard pile to your hand! Sweet. So you don't have to reset your hand. Okay, okay. Moss Viper. When the, if this elemental is defeated, move it to your hand instead of removing it from the game. Okay, okay. Another guy who can just come back. Jungle Jester. When a connected elemental leaves your formation, add three boosts to this. Oh my god, he's so strong. He's so angry. When you use this elemental to perform a ritual, add one boost and one shield to it. That's on any row. That's good. The Coin Hunter. Move a connected elemental to your discard pile, then collect four gold. You might as well throw away your uh, basic guys then. And finally, in the market, we have Crane Conjurer. Deal two damage to an elemental in your opponent's formation. If this elemental has at least one boost, deal one additional damage. Oh, so that was everything in the base game box that you get for the Kickstarter exclusive edition. I am almost out of breath. Woo, that was bad. I am getting old. Uh, actually, I'm dumb. These slots are for your tokens. I'll eventually pop those out, but now it's not the right time because we got to move on to the next part of this unboxing, which is the... We have our enamel pin. So basically what happened was Unstable Games slash Tea Turtle did one tree planted. So every single person that purchased the game basically had a tree planted for them and we got a pin for it. Oh, that's the, uh, the guy in the elemental market. That's the hummingbird. Uh, we're going to move on to the vinyl figure box, which honestly I'm very excited about because I absolutely adore all of the stuff that Unstable Games does when it comes to figures. They're so cute. And the vinyl figure box actually includes all six of the sages. It's not just the four from the base game. It also includes the sages from Sand and Wind. This is another holographic top, which is cool. Uh, it only has the symbols for the four base actions, but that's fine. I will once again be showing you guys these on the smaller screen. I want to spin them around for you. Also, holographic versions of the faction leader cards that are in here. Well, we're going to start with Perella because he's closest to the bottom. She? I think it's a she, but that could also just be my bias based on the fact that the name ends with an A. This is Perella's figure. The 
Vines are like bouncy. I don't know how to describe it, but they do move a little. There's a little bit of give, so they won't just snap if you accidentally hit them with something, which is good. This is super, super cool. I'm not going to lie to you. These figures are awesome. And I mean, you could also reuse them for other things for sure. No one's going to stop. Next up on the list, we have Gravel, the Pebble Elemental Sage. Oh my god, his basic elemental is actually part of his statue. Oh, it's so cool! He's so cute. Unstable Games just knows how to do cute stuff. There is no way around it. They just get it. Cedar, the Twig Sage. Uh, I pointed at him for sand before, but clearly this is the Twig Sage. So we could just pretend that I said he was Twig before, it's fine. He also has his basic elemental. Do they all have that and I just missed it? Yep, yep, they sure do. Uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> but this is Cedar. And here comes Torrent, the Droplet Elemental Sage. He does, in fact. Oh, it's really cool how they have like the translucent resin for... Oh, his water. That's so cool. They really, really, really know what they're doing. We have Cyclone, who's the wind elemental sage. Oh my god, his elemental is so cute. It's just a little tornado. Yo, that that fan is fantastic. This this character is fantastic. Peak character design, bro. We have Dusty, the elemental sage of sand. He is giving me huge huge Naruto vibes, but it's like the sand village is crossed with the stone village. Like he gives me huge Onoki vibes. I just, I just feel that from him, but obviously he's using sand as his powers. That's cool. That's pretty cool. And that was everything in the vinyl figures box. I know I said we were going to do Sand and Wind separately, but there are figures in there, holographic cards were in here, so we're doing that part. But the actual box will be in a separate video. So what comes next? The playmat box. Now, this includes playmats for all six factions, plus Elemental Market. And in addition, it has acrylic standees for all of the faction leaders. It's holographic! I really thought it was going to fall out in time, but it didn't. We've got our elemental sage standees. And then we've got all of our uh, playmats. That's a lot of playmats. Oh, because they're so folded up. Do they smell, though? That's the question. Not as bad. The Here to Slay mats still smell to this day. They are so stinky! Oh, these are going to take a lot of unfolding. But this is your elemental market. So what happens here is you leave those two decks that we talked about before. One goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. Then you flip over the top three cards from them. And just like casting shadows, whenever someone purchases something from one of the elemental market spaces, Next card just gets pulled over and flipped. Same with like Here to Slay when you're doing the monster cards. If someone beats a monster, the next card takes their place on here. I have to say, the box that they put them in rolls them up nicely. Like, okay, sure, they take up less space than the other boxes do, but they're going to be a pain to unfurl. This is your droplet playmat. Oh, here goes your cyclone playmat. That's cool. This is some Kung Fu Panda stuff, if I ever saw it. Here's Team Leaf. Now, I'm sorry to say that pretty much all the colors on both the cameras I'm using seem to be incredibly washed out, but these are very vibrant. Everything has been incredibly vibrant, as is the way of Unstable Games. They would never give you something not vibrant. Here's Team Twig. What's up, y'all? Who's next? Pebble! I would really like to run a Loxodon just like that. That would be great. And finally, this is Team Sand. Oh, that's clever. They'd have glass. That's really clever. I wouldn't have thought of that. But now I have it in my head. 
I'm going to build up the standees and I will show them to you one by one. Before I build anything else, I just want to show you something cool that the standee bases aren't the same on both sides. You can tell which side is the top and which side is the bottom. We're sticking with these like large size bases though. That's fine by me. I don't mind. And like casting shadows, uh, there's markings at the bottom. So at least you know what you have. Well, I mean, you probably have to know the skew and other stuff, but at least there's some kind of marking on the bottom. Kind of neat. These are an incredibly tight fit into their bases, just so you know. Very, very tight fit. But there's your pebble sage. Uh, do remember that these acrylic standees, they're the same design on both sides. It's not like there's a front and a back. It's just the same design in reverse. Here's the twig sage. Easiest one to just shove in there. And I'm here for it. Like he's also kind of tall. Let me just readjust my angle a little bit. <laughs> Here was the leaf sage. No, no. Perella is the leaf sage. Here we go. Super cute. You could just make this a boss in really any D&D &D campaign. You don't, you don't need to do anything extra to it. This is pretty freaking cool. And to our final two, the expansion sages. This is the sand sage. Look at that. Look at that. It looks way cuter and less Naruto-esque than the figure does, though, which is interesting. Finally, we have Cyclone, the Wind Sage. He looks angrier as an acrylic than he does as a figure. He looks kind of kind of cool as a figure, but the acrylic version is like, I'm going to mess you up, man. Next up, we have all the wooden tokens that you get exclusively through Kickstarter. So like I said, almost all the tokens have one on one side and then three on the other. I'll just show them to you real quick, all the different kinds of tokens. Here are your non-double-sided tokens. These are the tokens that you actually put on your player board to show your level. So as you level up, you slide your faction token up higher. Then we have our boost tokens. And like I said, all the tokens that have things that can be, you can get more of, our one side is one, and then the flip over side is three. So these are your boosts. This will up your attack damage. Then we have your shields and your shields protect you from one damage. Uh, again, one on one side, three on the other. The thing that I am noticing is that I only have the metal gold coins. They didn't give me wooden tokens for the gold that you get in the game, which is a little weird and different than casting shadows was next up we have the damage counters again the damage counters one on one side three on the other i mean you could probably also just bust out your old moncala beads if you played pokemon and use those as damage counters <laughs> or minus one minus one dice from magic the gathering if you wanted to use those instead you don't necessarily have to use these and then what i'm assuming is tradition with unstable games tabletop games is that you whenever the expansion comes out they often have some new mechanic that involves some kind of buff or debuff so i'm assuming there must be a wind based mechanic now and also a sand based mechanic now because there are wind and sand tokens that are not part of uh, the regular suite of tokens and they do not uh, have anything on the back they're just this is the one side that they are the erosion tokens actually were misprinted in what came with the kickstarter and unstable games had released a poll that said hey do you want new erosion tokens that are correct so they have three on one side and one on the other or do you want five dollars credit towards the next unstable games kickstarter and i chose i just want the erosion tokens that are correct so now i have extra erosion tokens and i'm gonna sit out on twisted cryptids which is probably running right now as this video comes out and the final thing that we have to look at by the card sleeves that they gave us for everything. One thing I will definitely say may end up becoming a problem is that the little bands that go across your cards only fit the cards when they're not sleeved. When they are sleeved, those bands are not going to work anymore. And it seems like 
Command of Nature only has one kind of card back, whereas Here to Slay and Casting Shadows had different card backs for different kinds of cards. So you may end up getting confused. I would suggest that if you were going to play and you want to put the stuff away, making some kind of card divider for your cards because you will definitely get confused if all of the card backs are the same. That is probably a cost-saving measure on Unstable Games' side, but it'll be more confusing and more difficult for players to reconcile with than them. That's everything in the Ultimate Collector's Expanded set, but I have sticker sheets that I want to show y'all. So let me move on over there to the sticker sheets, and I will show them to you. So there should be, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 67% sure that there is a sticker sheet for each of the six factions included. So let's find out. We have the Pebble sticker sheet which is a bunch of the more powerful uh, elemental dudes on your team. You have the Torrent ones. Yeah, it has your Sage, it has your Basic, and then it has your three strong guys. This is the Leaf one. I don't know where I'm going to put these stickers yet, but they were too dang cute to pass up, so I had to keep them. Here's Twig. And then I have one more set of stickers, which is for Sand and Wind. So we will be getting a lot of sneak peeks as to who is included in Sand and Wind in this unboxing, even though it's for the Kickstarter in general without the expansion. But here's Sands. They are involving a lot of glass, which is cool. That makes sense. And here is Wind. Boom. So that's everything in the Command of Nature Kickstarter unboxing set. This is the exclusive edition, of course. Do I recommend it? Yes. Just from watching the how to play videos, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really, really fun. There obviously won't be as much crazy replayability as there is in like a game of Commander because your deck is so big. This one, you're, or there's definitely going to be random stuff as you buy stuff from the market, but you're going to have, you have a much smaller deck to start with. I don't expect to get as much play out of this as Here to Slay. But I definitely am looking forward to playing with my friends. I think this will be a very, very fun game to do. Don't forget, there'll be a separate unboxing for what's in the Sand and Wind expansion. But if you guys like what you saw, leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, sub. And I will see you guys and gals later in the next one. If you would like to support, uh, I'm just going to play a voice clip from DM Roundtable, from the lovely DM Lakara so that you guys can figure out how best to support. <laughs> Hit the buttons. Do the Please. thing. If you have money, make the buttons give him money. If you don't have money, just hit the buttons that subscribe. And that also gets him money. So you get to feel good either way. And with that, I will see you guys again later in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Pick up your copy of Command of Nature now.